Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How's everybody getting along? Well, with the tropics are heating up as we now officially have Invest 97L. Is this going to be the one that becomes Tropical Storm Danielle this week or next week? We'll break all the modeling data down for you and show you what I think is going to happen. We have a Hurricane Howard in the eastern Pacific as well as a few other systems in the Pacific. And what's going on with this major pattern shift across North America? Is it going to lead to more severe weather? And how long will the cool snap last across the east? Let's get into it. All right, so what is going on here? Let's take a look at the modeling. You know, things are going to get interesting here. First, we're just going to take a look quickly uh, with uh, what's going on here with uh, Hurricane Howard. Well, behind it, we have a 70% chance of something developing here. Um, and that's with this tropical wave back in through here. Um, but actually, up in through here, this is where Hurricane Category 1 uh, Howard exists. And you can see those taller cloud tops here. You know, really kick into the northwest, going to become weak into a tropical storm in time here. Um, but actually, as we get towards the uh, Atlantic here, this is what my feature is uh, for this video. You can take a look. A rather interesting system to behold here. Um, it is interesting. The Hurricane Center has taken it down to 30%. That was from the 40% that was about a day or two ago. Um, but I still think this thing has a good chance of developing here. All right, so here is Invest 97L. This is the system that we're going to be watching for potential development here off the Cape Verde Islands and in the main development region of the Atlantic. All right, though, so what you wanted to watch here, this is what is Invest 97L. This is what we're going to be watching over the course of the next 8 to 10 days here. So let's take a look. You know, there's the Cape Verde Islands. They are right up here. Africa, and then you have the Caribbean islands over here and the U.S. East Coast. So we are dealing with a little feature here in the Western Caribbean. Here in the Eastern Pacific, we have Hurricane Howard, and we also have uh, some tropical waves that could develop here as well. Hurricane Howard, this is as strong as it's going to become because I expect it to weaken as it heads out over cooler water, wind shear, and dry air. Now, over here, we're dealing with an invest system over here in the Western Pacific in China, South China. And we have a frontal boundary up here over Japan that's protecting you at the moment. We do have a system we're watching just south of Japan as well. And another one uh, just east of the Philippines here as well. So let's put this into motion. I'm going to show you what happens with this tropical wave. You know, as we head in time, this Invest 97L system. Let's see, we head towards Thursday the 11th. Now this starts to look more like a tropical storm at this point. Take a look at this. This is a pretty good structure. It is a pretty good circulation. And if I zoom out just a little bit, you can see how it's trying to create its own environment here. It's pushing a lot of these low clouds, the stable air and the dust uh, to the north. So it's able to pretty much breathe at this point and get good inflow and outflows going. Now there is another system behind it. Um, the GFS, the 12Z, was blowing up this system much more robust behind it, but I'll show you in this run, it doesn't really quite do that, and there's going to be a lot of bouncing around, um, you know, when you get further out on the models like that. Now, if you look here in the eastern Pacific, we got a couple waves we're watching. Howard is just pretty much fizzling out by this point, not much of a factor. There's that feature towards Hawaii, but it's looking a lot more benign at this point, so you're going to pretty much get missed by this here, Hawaii. So, yeah, nothing to really worry about there. And there is a couple systems over here in the Western Pacific, you know, the system east of the Philippines. South China system just continuing to deluge lots of rain. And you got a frontal boundary up here moving through Japan. These systems should move up and around and pretty much miss Japan at this point. Um, but let's see. Let's see what happens with our Invest 97L system here. As we go throughout time, let's approach the weekend here. So yeah, here is the latitude of the Caribbean islands. You can see we're just passing just north of it. And this is a pretty robust area of shower and thunderstorm activity on the northeast side. Um, so as we go throughout time, this system seems to want to jaunt up a little bit more towards the northwest. So if you're in Bermuda, you might want to keep an eye on this. East Coast, just keep a close eye on it. Even if you are in the Gulf, you know, stranger things have happened. It depends on what happens with this trough along the East Coast. You can see it's pretty persistent here. So any system that comes up is probably likely going to be deflected back out to sea. But that all depends because things can change between now and then. Now, as we head throughout time here, 
let's get into the rest of the weekend. We start to see the system really start to encounter some wind shear. You start to see the system start to uh, uh, ingest some a little bit of dry air to the southwest here. But look at it. It's holding on. This run of the GFS, the 18Z, really continues to try to hold on this system. Now, you see the frontal boundary over here. That's where we're going to have some wind shear. So this system might have a hard time surviving once it heads to the west. We have a couple other tropical waves in the intertropical convergence zone we're going to watch out here towards Africa. Now, as we get into the eastern Pacific, you notice one thing's going on. It seems to be quieting down for the most part. We do have some shower and thunderstorm activity up towards Puerto Vallarta here, Acapulco. But, you know, for the most part, most of the activity is down here towards Central America. Um, we don't really see anything really developing. But look at this over here towards um, the Western Pacific. We start to see the development of what could become a typhoon here. If you are in uh, the Philippines and into Taiwan and Japan, in the China coastline, you might want to keep an eye on this system because I'll show you this in time what happens with it. But let's take a look at our system here in the Atlantic because this is definitely my Atlantic viewers want to keep an eye on this system. You see how the wind shear really starts to take over here. Uh, this is Wednesday, August 17th, so we're literally a week out here. Look at this. It's still holding it on somewhat. You can see the center of circulation right here. Uh, but at this point, we're really starting to see uh, the trough along the east coast, the dry air from the southwest, uh, really start to take over the system uh, at this point. Um, and see behind here, we're kind of missing that system that the previous GFS run showed uh, with uh, the system pretty much on its heels. You don't see it anymore. So there's going to be a lot of bouncing back and forth. We do have a few other systems here in the eastern Pacific that could be of interest, but it's hard to get you know, a pinpoint on this this far out. And here it is east of the Philippines. If you are in the northern Philippines, it's starting to look like uh, by this point it might be you. It might be you, Taiwan. Japan, you're not out of the woods. So keep an eye on this system. This is definitely looking like it could become a typhoon. And as we head to the Atlantic, let's see what happens with our system uh, in time here as we head throughout the rest of next week. You can see it here. It becomes what looks like absorbed into this front here. So you have this frontal boundary just off the New England coast. Here's the moisture from what's left of Invest 97L, or if it's still a system or maybe a name system by this point, it's being deflected off to the northeast. You see these north, uh, north southwesterly winds coming from the southwest to northeast, just shearing the system apart. We have more activity here in the eastern Pacific by this point, so things getting interesting again. Uh, the intertropical convergence zone remains active here in the Cape Verde season, so we still want to keep an eye on that. And here over towards the northern Philippines, look at this. This is what could be a major typhoon at this point. So going to keep an eye on this. Um, if you are in the Taiwan area, still keep an eye on it as well. But the northern Philippines, this GFS run is really targeting you, uh, especially north of Manila. If you're from Manila on northward, definitely keep an eye on this. Um, Japan at this point, you're closing in out of the woods. But, you know, this far out, a lot can change. And as we head into the Atlantic, let's just head out a few more frames here. We'll see if there's anything that could be developing um, this is interesting to note because it looks like things are starting to get quiet again in the Atlantic come the 22nd. Things can really change, though, between now and then. And look what's off the coast to the western part of Mexico here. This could be our next, another named storm here right around the Puerto Vallarta area. So if you're along these resort towns, definitely keep an eye on these. And look at this. What was left of that potential typhoon? So let's back that up. See how it moves just south of Taipei. A Taiwan and then moves towards uh, China and then another one look at this this is by August 23rd another one bears down here on the Philippines so definitely want to keep an eye on this if you're in the Philippines the pattern seems to be favoring these storms heading westward and targeting you so definitely going to keep an eye on this along the west coast here of Mexico look at that that is a big old mess and that could funnel tropical moisture as far north look at this as Texas look at this big old mess so tropical moisture into the part of Texas by this point it's a possibility uh, and by this point in the Atlantic
it doesn't look very promising, but look at this. This is an interesting tropical wave coming off the coastline here. All right, so the Euro, let's see what the Euro does with Invest 97L. Let's see if there's any agreement here. You always have to take a look at the two major models during all this. The Euro is doing what it is notorious for doing, uh, bringing it a little bit farther to the south than the GFS, because look at this. The GFS brings it further to the north. The Euro is bringing it on a more southerly track, keeping it a bit weaker, and that's usually what happens to weak storms. But look what happens. This is curious. By Saturday, August 13th, this Saturday, where is it? Well, it's kind of in this region right here. It's really hard to pinpoint. We have this area of high pressure that could be trying to pick this up. There's the trough along the U.S. East Coast. What is going on here? Well, it seems like it kind of gets... This is really interesting. Look at this. There's like pulses of energy coming out of the northeast here. So what that's telling me is there's a pretty hostile environment that's indicated here by the euro. And what that ultimately means is it doesn't look like the euro gets at any headway towards the U.S. East Coast. So as that high retreats to the uh, northeast, that's what's going on. And then we have another low pressure system developing along the East Coast. Whether this becomes subtropical or tropical in nature... We'll have to see here. All right, so look at the Eastern Pacific here. Here's good old Howard just cruising off to the northwest here. It will become a fading memory. Um, there's that next system potential here. Uh, there's that system that was eventually going to hit Hawaii, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen now. So let's see what the euro does here. So in time, we're looking for a trend of lower activity here. Well, we do see that next system just off the Mexican and Cabo San Lucas coastlines here. And this is by Sunday, August 14th. That system's kind of meandering and kind of stalling here off the coastline. You don't really see too many other areas. Here's another area of low pressure. Uh, but at this point, it does seem to be this system, the Euro, wants to take it towards the Baja, California. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on here in time. All right, so I wanted to show you what's going on here. Along the U.S. East Coast, water temperatures are really warming fast as they continue to in the Gulf of Mexico and out here towards the Cape Verde, we do have an area where things could be a little bit trouble for development here in the northern main development region of the Atlantic. But we'll keep an eye on that here. All right, so let's take a look at any large scale areas. Let's back it up here. Take a look at this. So as we head into Wednesday and into Thursday, there's that next reinforcing shot. This is the jet stream moving in across the Great Lakes in the northeast. So we could this could spark off some isolated strong thunderstorms here across parts of the Ohio Valley into the northeast and the mid-Atlantic parts of New England. But it's not going to be a widespread outbreak by any means of the imagination here. But look how it just kind of cuts off here. Um, so at this point, this system closes off into what we see as one of those cutoff troughs and that is going to be the main driver of next week's weather so we're not going to see any large-scale areas of severe weather we'll just see weak impulses pivot around it unfortunately areas like kentucky are the ones that are going to see more rain out of this all right so let's take a look at the h triple r model we'll see what's going on here you know most of the activity looks like it is into the southeastern part of the united states we're gonna have those gully washers that pop up uh, but they're actually lasting here into the evening and overnight hours which is interesting now look at the northeast we're definitely clearing out here you can see where the frontal boundary has made it through uh, by this point now let's take a look and see if we have any severe weather on the horizon here this is our trusty HRRR model. Let's see if we can get a little bit further out here. So as we get into the day on Wednesday. So you know, this, is, this is the afternoon at 1 p.m. Now let, look at this. Let's stop this here at 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Look at this. This Some of these storms in through here could become strong. I wouldn't be surprised if some of them become severe. Um, so you're going to want to keep an eye on this. Uh, one thing to note, too, is this is going to be hurting areas that were, saw tremendous amounts of flash flooding over the last couple weeks in Kentucky and parts of West Virginia. So this is definitely not a good thing. And if you notice, look at this down here in the Gulf. This seems to be an area of showers and thunderstorm activity here. So we'll keep an eye on that, see if um, it does seem to die down during the evening hours. But you can see here, it doesn't make it much north of the Mason-Dixon line. So that is good news. 
As we get into 1 a.m. on Thursday morning, though, some of these thunderstorms could make it up into the New Jersey area, southern Pennsylvania, but they're fighting a lot of dry air at this point. So let's continue to put this into motion on Thursday, 6 a.m. here. We do have maybe the chance of some beneficial rain swinging up here towards parts of eastern Long Island here, east of Islip. So this might make its way into Rhode Island in eastern Massachusetts, where the drought has become severe in recent days here. Let's just back that up just a little bit here. Look at this. So it tries to bring some of this moisture up, but, you know, most of it stays offshore here. Um, and it does redevelop some of these off right around noon on Thursday. All right, so here is where we're leaving off here Thursday. This is the NAM 3 kilometer. allows us to go a little bit farther out with the mesoscale models. There will be a chance of some showers and thunderstorms. There's actually going to be a reinforcing shot of cold air here, or should I say cooler air. It's going to feel a little cold, though, because some of you might not get out of the lower 70s come Friday into the northeast. That's going to feel so great. But it might spark off some showers and thunderstorms here. This is 6 p.m. on Thursday evening. Some of these could contain small hail, even some gully washers and some stronger storms here down in the Virginia area. But let's see what happens with this activity as it heads to the southeast. This is the 9 p.m. time frame, so it's knocking on your door here in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, the central Susquehanna Valley here. Uh, hello or Hudson Valley, you might have to watch out a little later here on Thursday evening as we continue to put this into motion. Let's see how far east this front gets. It kind of washes out, so it kind of just falls apart, but look at that. It's going to clear the area to give you a beautiful weekend. All right, so here we are, John vacationing in Calverton Water Park. Take a look at that beautiful shot here. Uh, the cooler conditions are starting to roll in. This is good news. This is this was another warm day uh, on August 8th. But look at this. Um, you can see some of the high cirrus clouds up ahead. That is indicative of a front slowly moving in. And we will see big changes to the northeast. We're already seeing it in interior areas. areas. So nice capture there, John. All right, so who's going to see all the rainfall here? Well, it's definitely not going to be any drought busters here in the northeast. Look at that as we head towards the weekend just no rain you will see cooler temperatures that will be the key but look at this from the ohio valley mississippi river valley along the gulf coast and the u.s east coast this is where we're going to see a lion's share of the rainfall unfortunately if you head to the northeast here um the gulf coast is definitely winning here look at this this is some of these totals two and a half three inches down towards the coastline southern mississippi alabama southeastern Louisiana here but if we head into the northeast here let's take a look at this so we head up here our drought continues to get worse here so look at what we're looking at this is through Friday and then maybe through Saturday Sunday Monday we're not seeing anything here this is very very nil next to nothing here and yeah eastern Maine you might see something as this cold front tries to spin up a low here and parts of the Ohio Valley, this is where you don't need the rain down here. We wish we could move some of this rain northeast. All right, so we're going to start off with your temperatures on during the day on Wednesday. So take a look at this cooler air. North of this line, you're generally in the 70s. Look at that beautiful air. You are dealing with baking conditions here into the plains again. So we're getting reloaded with another shot of warm air. But we're going to have a battle here between the cooler air, 70s north of this red line, and look at all these 90s and even some areas of 100s here. As we head during the day on Friday, look at this. It's like the bottom falls out here. Look at all those 70s and near 80 degree temperatures. The Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and the Northeast. And as we head during the day on Saturday, look at this. Yeah, you're, you're warming a little bit, but, you know, upper 70s and lower 80s, this is beautiful. This out here is not very beautiful. This is 102 degrees, Wichita, Kansas. That is ridiculously hot. Um, but look at this. Even the Appalachians here getting a taste of some low 80s and some 70s there. And look at this. Here into your Sunday, is this going to last? Well, it looks like we continue to get shots of cooler air. Look at this. North of this red line, you're generally into the 70s. And we end it Monday, August 15th. Look at this. We start to warm it up a little bit, but generally north of this line, you're in the 70s. All right, look at this. This is exciting. Uh, we start initially well below what we had in the low 80s. Look at those overnight lows in the 50s. We will have a cold front moving through Thursday evening, so that might spark off showers and thunderstorms between mainly 4 and 8 p.m., 
maybe a strong cell with uh, small hail and gusty winds to 45 miles per hour, but not a severe weather outbreak here. Look at this. Friday, Saturday. Look at this. 75 for a high on Friday. Look at those sleeping temperatures. Open up all those windows. Get the fans blasting that cold air in. Look at that. 46 and 45 for your low Saturday morning. Beautiful weekend to behold. Get out there and enjoy it. Thanks for joining me, watching. Don't forget to share, smash the like button. Question or comment down below. Let's keep the weather conversation going here. I love to read your questions or comments. Over on my social media pages, Media Mark on Facebook, also Weather Northeastern, Hurricane Northeastern, also uh, Susquehanna Weather, and you can visit me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. Thanks for joining me.